We've explored what farmers mean when they talk about mob grazing. Now let's hear why they mob graze. You know, number one, just that protecting the soil, the first, that's the first thing it does is give you that, that layer to help keep things from drying out as quickly. And then it's feeding the biology, which we've, over the years we've seen earthworms and that come into life pretty good on this farm. There's, so there's always been a lot of stuff feeding into the soil, but when we're doing the mobbing, we're probably tripling the amount of material that's, that's going down at any given time. Mm -hmm. Organic matter, the fields that we've mobbed when we took soil samples this spring, we're all at 4% now. And the rest of the fields are in the mid threes. It, the amount of forage is growing is, is crazy. But the other thing we saw was our organic matter that are going up. And when we take soil samples, we're on heavy clay, red clay soils. And I can go right to the paddock next to it and show, you know, maybe an inch of dark topsoil on, on top of the, the clay. And here we're pushing almost two inches. And we didn't have that three or four years ago. We're building topsoil on there. Okay. My wife usually gets the cows in the morning and she says that manure distribution is much better. If you take it all off like that, make the cattle stay for longer, they're just going to put more manure, more urine, everything more, you know, more densely and hopefully more evenly distributed throughout the entire pasture as well. And what you see then is you'll get a lot of clumpy. You can see how every manure paddy is in the field and that's bright green and there's dead brown around it or whatever, slower growth. What I'm seeing here is what I want to see is I'm getting green pretty evenly. It's kind of hard to pick out where the manure oh, is. And that's because you'd have spots where cattle just you can't get them to graze in a bigger area and you cut that down into five acres and you put you know enough cattle in there that you can kind of make them clean everything up which i think in the long run helps you it helps everything because like you're saying you don't get one spot that the cattle won't graze and then the cattle you know and then it, the, the grass won't come back there or you get something that's growing there you don't want there cattle won't graze it and then it's kind of stuck in that pasture and i just find the grazing is a lot more even because instead of the behavior where they seek out specific grasses they like there's so many cattle around them, they realize if I don't eat this now, somebody else will, so. What we'd find is in the afternoon, especially in the summer, it would get hot at noon uh, or a little later. They decided they were done grazing. They'd all clump up into a group and you could not get them separated or get them to graze anymore. We were trying moving the front fence ahead a little bit. And that didn't really seem to do it, but by giving them another section, significant portion of grazing, they will, they will break up, they will go and they'll graze for several hours. So it's a huge difference in behavior. At, I never would have believed it if I hadn't, hadn't seen it. It's like, why didn't I think of this before? <laughs> Over time, on the same amount of acres, we've been able to increase our stocking capacity approximately 5% a year. And so if you're able to do that it, without you know, spending a bunch of money to, to buy land, especially what land prices have done in the, you know, the recent past, it's a nice way to grow your business. Here's an example of a field managed the same for three or four years. The only difference was this spring, I overgraze this a little bit. And I still have litter. I don't even know if it really overgrazed. I just grazed it a little harder than I did this one here. And the difference in growth is just unbelievable. I got maybe a half a day extra grazing on here compared to this one. And this has, by volume, I don't know, probably pushing at least 50% more, maybe double the volume. I'm more and more convinced that the more you leave, the more you grow. And this is I think we can graze longer in the fall because I think the higher organic matters and I think just stronger grow stronger plants because they I think their root systems are better they you know by letting it get a little taller I think they develop better root systems so I they're not going to dig through snow to get to this much bluegrass mm -hmm. it's not going to happen mm -hmm. but if you've got stuff there whether it's fescue or orchard or whatever's left they'll, they'll I mean, I've got photos of it you know they're digging down they've got the nice Snow looks like a milk right. mustache right. going down to get all this stuff, which is great. And they'll and we'll roll out a bale of hay, and they won't touch it. Like, I'm grazing into December for the last four years till December 23rd last year. That's at minimum of 30 days. And on the bad years in the drought, I mean, I was in September. I was feeding hay. You put a dollar amount on that. It's a huge cost savings to be grazing those extra month or two months. Uh, we planted uh, sorghum sedan, male sterile grazing corn. Um, several different annuals trying to deal with the summer slump. As soon as I went to the mob grazing and gave it a long rest period, I haven't had to deal with it. I haven't had a problem with the summer slump now for probably four or five years. I told you earlier we had well, one measurement, temperature was uh, 94 degrees out in the bare ground, it was 70 degrees inside the, underneath the thatch, it's a 24 degree difference. I was still growing grass um, and right away afterward, within 10 days after grazing, 
during the summer slump. When normally we should have no growth, I was getting a lot of growth. So I like a longer rest period. I like to have that plant fully rested and I'm not seeing the problems I used to see with the summer slump. I've been to quite a few pasture walks and I see this time of year guys are getting into that roller coaster where things get going faster and faster and they keep getting shorter and shorter and we get into dry weather and they have less growth and they need more feed and it's a vicious cycle. Uh, we have that to the same extent, but we're way less hampered by it there. And my calf uh, daily gains and stuff are are staying the same or increasing. My steer, uh, I'm getting two pounds a day in the mob. You know, short grass is the same concept. That protein is going to affect the cow. And what I was seeing back then was a lot of grazing farms had really thin cows and extremely loose cows. So they were just shooting protein through them and they were burning energy in the process. So our our solution to that was to start getting taller we need we want fiber in that grass and then especially when we took the grain out now we're relying 100 percent on this pasture to provide everything that cow needs it makes no sense to give six or eight inch tall grass that doesn't have any fiber in it we don't we don't have a lot of you know that loose runny green stuff we just very good i mean it's a it's a good perfect manure by you know the, the dimple in the middle and you know we're not it's not it's not super fibrous but uh but we think we're getting, and we get, because we're seasonal, you know, getting a bread is really critical for us. So we don't want cows to get too thin, which if we're grazing a lot of really young stuff, we used to have more problems with that. We feed no corn. And I guess I feel you gotta, if you're gonna farm, you gotta look at your animals anyway. We get a pretty good look at our animals every day for that 15 minutes. Uh, I think you should be spending that time anyway. Uh, to throw them out in a paddock and leave them for four days and I hear guys that got cattle out there for four or five days and they got to go drive around to find them. They're not looking at their animals. And I think the other thing for us with the dairy, seeing those cattle more often per day, I think is a better thing anyway. You see, especially for us, we're, you know, we're, we, we're seasonal breeding, so during that time it's good to get out there. And the rest of the time, you know, you, you, you see problems if, the, if there's a water problem or if there's whatever. Just health issues. I think we, we spot Where's things soon. Those plants are rested. They're coming up. I'm, you know, they've been rested for 75 days each time. They've, I've had three, four years of doing it, you know, quote, right, you know, in my mind. Uh, really resting those plants and they're hitting the, the springtime. They're growing like crazy. So part of that growth is due to the rain. Part of it is due to the plant being fully rested, I think. I know it soaks rain in like absolutely crazy without, you know, just because when we were halfway through this field, we got inches, inches upon inches in, in a few days. I think we had seven inches in three days in three in, in three big downpours. So it was, you know, like two inches, three inches and three inches. And because we had that mat on the ground, the heifers never even made tracks. I noticed this spring that, that our, our plants are tightening quite a bit. Uh, we got very few paddocks that that are that you can see any ground in them even after they've been grazed there's there's so much organic matter and there's a, den, a density that's really nice in there there are clearly some reasons to think more seriously about this practice but as with any change in management strategy there are some drawbacks to think about in the next video we'll learn about potential stumbling blocks and how these farmers have dealt with them